All right, so what we're gonna do today is just do a little bit of a crash course, a little bit of an introduction into making an iPhone app using Swift UI. And so what we're gonna do is, I'll start off with showing you the end product. Very basic, simple, hello world. There's our simulator. So we're gonna have a little bit of a hello world with red text, have some text that says testing one, two, three, a button, a little fancy little button that if, when I say click me, if I click it, it'll show I've been clicked. And that's about it. That's our goal for today. Just, just to get comfy, just get used to the idea of using Swift UI. This assumes that you have a little bit of Swift knowledge here. You've done some iPhone development programming and now you wanna make the jump into Swift UI. So first thing we'll do is create a fresh project. So I'm gonna open up a new project in Xcode and give it a home. Now make sure before you give it a home, Swift UI must be chosen before continuing. All right, so when we build this project, the, uh, the first thing that it does is auto-generates a bunch of files. And we've seen some files in the past if you've worked with uh, storyboards and UI kit, but there's others that are brand new. We know that there's launch screen dot storyboard. Storyboards can come from the UI kit world, so you can still have your splash screen. Uh, app delegate. If you've understood app delegate, that's like the manager class of the of the uh, of the app. But now there's scene delegate, and scene delegate is actually uh, intended to replace app delegate. The idea behind scene delegate is that you will have a manager of scenes. They're trying to progress away from the whole concept of windows and and move into this whole concept of scenes. And so they created the scene delegate class. And in fact, I don't think that scene delegate will have much of a lifespan as Apple will move on to replacing it with something else. But you can see that there are a number of methods. We'll talk about scene delegate in a, in a future lesson, but not right now. What I wanna do is I wanna focus on what we're being given here. And I'm gonna jump back to contentview.swift. And contentview.swift here has uh, our basic hello world concept. And all it did was there's a var body extends some view. And what we're trying to do is display the content view with the preview providers. This is primarily for the preview portion. So peak we'll get to a little bit later, but we just wanna display some text that says, hello world. All right, so it's auto-generated the hello world for us already. So let's give it a run and see what appears here. And there you can see is hello world. All right, just a very basic hello world right there. Nothing special, it just, congratulations, you got your first uh, Swift UI based iPhone app. But now you'll notice that in this case, there's no UI kit. There's no uh, dragging and dropping. This was pure code. And it was very basic code to begin with, not, not as extravagant as what you had to do in the world of UI kit. So now what we wanna do is we wanna expand upon this and have a little bit of fun at the same time. So what we're going to do is, so we're gonna do is add a second text and let's see what happens here. So we're inside our body. We have a line of text that says, hello world. You might see this as a UI label from the UI kit world. And now what we're gonna do is add a second text, like which would be the logical progression here to see, you know, what can we do? So I'm just gonna say text. And I'm just gonna say testing one, two, three. All right, and that's it. And let's see what happens. Whoa, it did not like that. But let's see, maybe this is a, maybe it's just Xcode complaint. Let's see if we can actually run it. Nope, it still won't let us run. So here's the thing. Uh, you can have one item in your body, but when you wanna have more than one item, which is pretty well a given, we're gonna have more than one item in our, in our body for any screen that we build, uh, you're gonna have to put it in what's called a stack. Now there's two types of stacks. There's vertical stacks and there's horizontal stacks. Now, if I want to put this, I wanna have this one above the other, so I'm gonna go with a vertical stack. So what I'm gonna do is just modify these two lines here with an additional object. So I'm gonna say V, oops, so command set to undo that. Hate when that happens. Uh, v stack, all right, open a curly. And I'm going to close my curly at the bottom of the second text. 
Now let's make it a little bit more cleaner with some indentations. And let's see, the errors have gone away. So we put this inside a vertical stack. And now that we have it inside any sort of stack, it's going gonna, it's gonna to allow for more than one object. In this case, we have two texts, one above the other. So let's give it a shot, see what happens. Hit run. All right, so now we have hello world and testing one, two, three. Okay, so so far so good. Now we know how to add two labels or two lines of text onto our screen. So now let's add a button. All right, so the next step would be to add a button. All right, so I'm going to just add button and open a round bracket. Uh, I'd be very wary of the default options that come with button. I'm just going to stick to action. All right, and open a curly bracket. I'm going to close and hit enter. So what happens here is we have our action and inside the set of curly brackets, we're going to have something to update here. Right now I'm going to have nothing there. What I would like though, is to actually have some text for my button. So I'm going to open up at the end of my, my closing round bracket for button. I'm going to open up a curly. There's my closing curly and I'm going to put some text in. So text and the text will say, click me. All right, and it looks like everything's okay. Again, the sea of blood has disappeared. Let's hit run, let's see, how it, let's see what happens now. All right, so there's hello world, testing one, two, three, hit click me. I've got a button that clicks, great, but it's so boring, right? It's simple, black and white, a little blue, right? Let's add some flair to what we're working on here, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this. I'm going to start back at hello world. Now we can actually add some color, some font, something to dress it up a bit. And if you think to CSS, kind of the ideas are, are similar to what we're doing here, but, but we're doing it in terms of code here. So you can, you know how in HTML and CSS, you can modify and make things pretty instead of just the basic H1 and A2 tags. You can do the same idea here. But we're going to take more of a Swifty approach, right? So I'm going to start with hello world. So I'll give some space there. And with this text call, we specify the text as hello world. I can add a little bit more to it. I'm going to use separate lines so it's easier to read, of course, and it's a better way to do it. Hit enter. I'm going to add a little tab so it's a little more prevalent here. I'm going to continue on this line. And first I want to add some padding. I want some gap because they're all just sort of stacked right above the other. So I'm going to say dot padding, all right? So I'll give a bit of a gap there. Now let's change the font color. So I'm just going to hit enter again and say dot foreground color. And I'll say dot red. So the whole dot notation concept of dot red, or instead of saying UI color dot red or color dot red or whatnot, you can still continue that style of, of uh, notation here. Fine, let's, let's change the font size. So I'm going to say dot font. I'll keep using the system font. So dot system font style, uh, actually not style. I want system size colon uh, 35. There should have been an autocomplete for size. I, I think I hit enter too quickly, so that's why it just blew by me, but it's probably there. You, pro you probably have seen it yourself. So go ahead and choose a size option. Now let's hit run, let's see what happens. There's your hello world. Now it's in red, bigger font size. So let's apply this to testing one, two, three, and maybe try something slightly different. So I'm gonna kill some of the blank lines here just to reel it in a bit and give some gap there. All right, so we'll do some dot padding again because I wanna have that spacing. All right, let's change the color to be foreground color dot green. And finally, dot font, we'll get the same, same size. 
and we'll say uh, 35 again. But you can choose a different size if you really want to see the magic happening there. Uh, I got a little bit ahead of myself. This should actually be dot system of size. There. All right. That made that error go away. So we'll just hit run. We got hello world. We got testing one, two, three. Our button is still very boring. So what we need to do is add a little bit of life to the button itself. But we also want to do something where we want to be able to click on the button and have the text change. So what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the little gap here inside the curly brackets between the action after the action. This is where all the action literally happens. I mean, action, you can kind of get the idea. This Think of this little gap here as your event handler, where, where this highlight's going to go. So whatever event handling that happens to the button is going to happen there. And we also have text to dress this up. All right. Now, I'll come back to the event handler in a moment. Let's Since we're on the roll of dressing up our text, let's just finish off by actually adding some, some text to dress this up with. So I'm going to continue on this text and say dot font weight. Let's make a bold. So font weight dot bold. All right. Give it some padding as well. Too far ahead of myself. Let's hit enter dot background will be I'm gonna get rid of that and say dot purple sometimes it doesn't pop up so I'm gonna actually just say color dot purple just to be safe and then let's add some roundedness to the and let's add a rounded border first of all a rounded border and some roundedness to this button so we're gonna say dot corner radius we'll say it's 40. you can play with this number and see how uh, how the rounded corners will look with different numbers in this case all right uh, let's set the foreground color so the text color to be white so foreground color will be dot white and dot padding will be 10 because I want to add a little bit of padding, a little bit of an inset into the rounded corners, like a little bit of a border. Now I want to overlay a border. So we'll say overlay and I'm actually going to open up a set of round brackets and we have some gap in there. So add some extra lines and actually add a rounded rectangle or a border essentially. So I'm going to announce a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of also 40. And let's give it a dot stroke being color dot purple comma line width of five. So thickness of five. So what we've done now I'll just adjust these to make it consistent there. In fact, let's get rid of that. And so now what we've done is we've we've changed the foreground to be purple, the text to be white. We've added rounded rounded corners uh, to to the uh, to the button, and we've also added a border around the button with a bit of a gap. So let's see how this looks. And there you go. There's your click me. All right, and it looks a little bit snazzy there. Now, final thing we're gonna do is set it up so that when I click on this, the text of click me changes. So now we look at the event handler. Now, like I was saying earlier, these curly brackets represent your event handler for the button. So what we're going to do now is set it up so that the text changes. Now, in order to do that, we have to introduce something called a state variable. And state variables tend to hold information for the uh, for the item in question, 
so that uh, so that you can use it later. I mean, th I think a static is kind of a nice analogy for for uh, state variables here. So I want to declare a state variable. So I'm going to scroll up to the top, just outside of body. I'm going to say at state and say var. I'm going to call it text to update. I'm going to say it is click me. All right. So now I have a variable called text to update. It's represented with a value click me. It's a state var, so it's going to represent. It's going to remember its value. Okay. Let's just get rid of some blank lines there. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the default text from click me to text to update. All right. And then finally, inside the curlies. I'm going to say text to update is equal to I've been clicked. Now, what's interesting here is that you're saying the text to update is I've been clicked. I'm going to get to the error in a second. So what it's going to do is the question is, well, is it actually updating this? Well, we're going to find out in a moment. Uh, but that's the idea behind the state variable. Now that we say text is text to update, it, it should theoretically tie in the variable to it, and therefore, whenever I cha make a change to the variable, it should apply it directly. Now it's complaining, and that's because it wants us to basically, in a nutshell, say self dot text to update. So whenever we're dealing with event handlers, predominantly we're dealing when we're dealing with event handlers like this, we need to use self. Self is like this in Java, uh, but in UIKit, it was it was not as it was not as heavily used, and in Objective C, it was very heavily used. So you can see here in Objective C, which came before Swift, that you're using self almost everywhere. Then Swift came along, and you kind of dropped the whole self concept. Now with Swift UI, uh, we are kind of bringing it back here. All right, so let's give this a run. All right, so there's click me, and it says, I've been clicked. All right, so congratulations. You've done your first iPhone app using Swift UI, and you're able to add labels. You're able to dress up your labels. You're able to add a button, and you're able to dress up that button, and also set up an event handler, a very basic event handler using a state variable so that you can modify the text of your button. Now. The next video we're going to get into, we're going to take this a little bit further and make a calculator, a basic calculator just to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So stay tuned for that. And see you soon.